And we back! Oh, this should be a good one. Today I decided to add the top 10 point guards in NBA history to one draft class in their rookie form to try to figure out if somebody can overtake and become the greatest of all time. Because I feel like if you ask most people who's the greatest point guard of all time, they're going to say Magic Johnson. It's going to be hard to pick somebody other than Magic Johnson. But in today's video, it might be a couple different people. It might be a couple different people. Now, your next question is, Kenny, how did we determine who the top 10 point guards of all time is? Because there's so many great point guards in NBA history. And y'all know me. I don't like making lists. I don't like breaking players. And I don't like controversy. So I decided to do it scientifically. So I Googled top point guards in NBA history and found 10 different articles, some of them from ESPN, from Bleach Report, some very pristine slash credible do we want to say credible outlets and took the average scores and put together the list for example magic johnson was first all time on all 10 lists every single publication decided that magic johnson was the greatest point guard of all time so of course he's on this this roster there are some snubs out there so uh do not get mad at me if a guy that you think is top 10 of all time in point guard history is not on this list it, it, it wasn't me. It's the science. Go find the people at Bleach Report, ESPN, Sports Illustrated, The Washington Post, and so on and so forth. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave it a like, and that'll let me know. Should we do this for shooter guard, small four, power four, center, and continue it? I appreciate you. So let me introduce you to the top 10 point guards in NBA history. Number one was Magic Johnson. According to them, Magic Johnson is like... Maybe not going to be the first overall pick, but I don't need to explain to you why Magic is Magic. He was number one undisputedly. Number two was Oscar Robertson. He had an average placing of 2.5. So most people had him as the second best point guard of all time. And then like one or two publications had him at number three. But Big O averaged a triple-double for an entire season. He did a lot of great things in his career, okay? Number three, active player. The first active player to be on the list, Stephen Curry. The old Stephen Curry, the current day Stephen Curry, I took. He doesn't exist anymore, so I guess we'll see how the Warriors do without him. He's going to a different organization, ladies and gentlemen. His average score was three, so he was pretty much three throughout the entire thing. Number four was the logo himself, Jerry West, which is very interesting because some people had Jerry West as a shooting guard on their list, so he even ended up being unranked on one of the 10 uh, publications and he still was this high so shout out to jerry west the next one is zeke isaiah thomas just one a in this one just one a in this one um one of the greatest of all time chicago legend here don't need to explain to you why zeke is in this list next one was john stockton the all-time leader in steals all-time leader in assists never got that ring in this simulation, he won't ever have to match up against Michael Jordan. So he might, he might get a ring, only time will tell. Next, we got a player, another active one that is nicknamed the point god. It is Christopher Emmanuel Paul from Wake Forest, 19 years old. He even baby faced in his picture. I mean, he got a little stub on stuff, but he looks super young in his picture, which is dope. I didn't even know 2K did that. All of these people are 2K's version of them, 2K's rookie version of them. So I didn't change anything, uh, but Chris Paul. Next, we got Steve Nash, two-time NBA MVP, zero-time champion that could change today. I hate the way his hair looks in the game, but Steve Nash, one of the people I grew up watching and just absolutely love, so to have him here is dope. Next one is Jason Kidd, straight out of Cali on Cal. Um, he did his thing, ended up getting a championship later in his career, but he led some, some okay average teams in New Jersey to NBA Finals appearances. Never got that ring with them, but ended up getting it later in his career. All-time great, for sure. Russell Westbrook was 10th on the list and ended up getting into the thing. One-time MVP, has a finals appearance, average triple-double for like 90-something years in a row. Russell Westbrook is the 10th person in. And the guy that was very close to Russell Westbrook, their scores were eerily similar. Hold on, let me find it. Russell Westbrook average was 9.75. Walt Frazier's average was 10 exactly. Don't ask me how Walt Frazier didn't make it if his number is 10. But that's because a lot of people had like eights, you know? So, for example, Steve Nash and Jason Kidd both averaged about 8.125. So, either way, Walt Frazier did not make the video, unfortunately. Other people that got votes was, of course, Gary Payton, Bob Cousy, and Damian Lillard. Damian Lillard was also on the list. But these are our top 10 point guards in NBA history according to all these publications. And we're about to see which one of them is going to be the undisputed point guard on the KOT4Q NBA History Channel. If, yeah, that's what we call it. Yeah, NBA History Channel. So we're going to simulate this first season and get to the draft because the draft is going to be interesting. These are the current rosters. We'll see how things work with the current draft picks. So OKC potentially could have two of these guys because don't they got a million first round picks this year? We're going to see. First season, I don't know how much you care about the first season championship considering none of our people that we care about is in here. But we're going to get it down to the final four. The Pelicans versus the Nets. And the Nets end up winning in seven. Straight to the draft lottery just to see what's going on. I want to see... This guy has John Stockton Hall of Fame potential. Okay. Magic Johnson potential. 
Terrell Brandon potential is crazy. Is Jerry West going to end up 10th on our list because he got Terrell Brandon potential? Come on, man. Magic has magic potential. Great. Steph Curry got Steve Nash potential. John Stockton potential for Isaiah Thomas. Chris Paul got John Stockton potential. And then John Stockton got Chris Paul potential. And Russell Westbrook just got Hall of Fame ceiling. Steve Nash got Steve Nash. Exactly. That's kind of cool. All right. Who's going to get what pick? As long as you have a top 10 pick, you're getting an all-time great. This is the year. This was the year to be taken. Chris Paul no longer on the Suns. They end up with the third highest odds. Here we go. The team. I think it's the first overall pick is going to be the Hornets. The Warriors with no Steph Curry ended up being in the lottery and getting the second overall pick. Will they still select Steph Curry? The Wizards, the Pistons, could they get Isaiah Thomas? The Suns, could they get Chris Paul? Or could they get um, uh, Steve Nash? The Bulls never had a like elite point guard other than MVP Dare Rose. But like in this, no. Thunder, could they get Russell Westbrook? Magic? Nah, they ain't got much. So here we go. Trailblazers could say, hey, we're not even going to draft the point guard because we believe Damian Lillard deserved to be there to start off with. Let's get into this draft, man. I hope we see trades. That, that would be the best thing imaginable if we get a trade in this top 10 picks. First, the Charlotte Hornets. Take Magic. Magic can play every position on the court. I know you already got LaMelo, so take Magic. And they took Big O. I'm not mad at that either. Big O can also play multiple positions. He's a 6'5 point guard that can run probably one through three. I would say one through three probably, respectively. Number two, the Warriors select Jason Kidd. There it is. J Kidd at an 82 overall ends up going number two. 83 overall for Big O. Third pick is Magic Johnson to the Wizards. Magic with the Wizards? You know, that's, come on, man. It writes itself. It writes itself. Magic Johnson being with the Wizards is amazing. Okay. He averaged 17 and a half assists in college. I don't know if y'all just read that from Zach Harper. He said at the bottom. 17 and a half assists. Chris Paul goes to D-Town. All right, Christopher. Go ahead and put them back to uh, excellence. Him and Kay Cunningham together. That could work out. Because I think Kay Cunningham technically is a shooting guard in this game. So that could work out beautifully. Killian Hayes moved to the side. Christopher Emmanuel Paul is coming to town. Seth Curry goes to the Suns. Okay, Devin Booker and Steph Curry and DeAndre Aiden. That's kind of nice. Now, we'll take these players a couple years to get to their super, super, superstar level. So, you know, it might it's a maturation period. Is that the word? Where people try to mature? Chicago Bulls. There's no wrong answers. This is the wrong answer. This is the wrong answer, Chicago. This is the wrong answer. You don't trade the sixth pick for De'Aaron. You could draft somebody right now with a higher overall than De'Aaron. Well, I guess not. But you get what I'm saying, bro. De'Aaron and Davion Mitchell, and you gave away Vucevic too. So now the Kings got the sixth overall pick, and now got Sabonis. They got Vucevic and Steve Nash. Jeez. I mean, I'm not, I'm not loving what my Bulls just did there. Isaiah Thomas goes to OKC. Shea Gilgis, Alexander, Josh Gideon, Isaiah Thomas. Okay. You know what I'm saying? He goes steal some bad boy hard fouls in there. Next, eighth overall pick, Jerry West goes to the Magic. Oh, you know what? Magic Johnson going to the Magic would probably been better for it. it writes itself. But it's still Wizardry, Magic, all makes sense to me. Next, ninth overall pick, Jose Reyes? The shortstop that used to play for the Mets? 38 years old in real life now, but, but I guess he turned back the clock and became a small forward in the NBA. I cannot believe y'all didn't take... Who else? Russell Westbrook is still on the board. John Stockton was still on the board. He goes to play with Damian Lillard. And now Russell Westbrook is going to be this pick. And he goes to the Spurs to be with DeJounte. Hey, DeJounte be getting triple doubles too. So it's like those two players together. And that's it. Everybody has been selected in our draft. Top 10 point guards. I cannot believe that the Houston Rockets just sold their draft pick. This dude better be special. He got one badge. When John Stockton got 14 and Russell Westbrook got six. I don't know why Russell Westbrook has less badges than Marvin Stanley. But he does. Okay, who won this draft, do y'all think? Who won this draft? I mean, I can say that the Bulls lost. Can I say that confidently? That the Bulls lost the draft? Forget who won. The Bulls traded away the sixth overall pick and get back Davion Mitchell and De'Aaron Fox. If them boys don't win a championship in the next three seasons, I'm super disappointed in them. The Spurs got Zach Levine too, by the way. Russell Westbrook, DeJounte Murray, Zach Levine. Wow. Is every one of them going to start to start off their careers? I think that's a good question. Taco Fall is the starting center of the Bulls. Taco Fall is the starting center of the Bulls. Jeez, that's so... That, uh, all right, all right. Get past it, Kenny. Get past it. The Bulls are bad. That's nothing new. The Bulls have been bad for the majority of your life, Kenny. You feel me? So it's okay that they're bad in this fictional world. Oh, oh, Big O is not starting. There's a world to have him starting at the two, but they want to start 
Terry Rozier. I'm not in control, but I would definitely have Big O starting. Steve Nash does immediately come in and start. They started Vucevic and DeMontis Sabonis. They got Gary Payton the second. Okay. Jerry West is starting over Cole Anthony. Chris Paul is starting. I like this Pistons team. I ain't gonna lie to you. The Pistons team look kind of nice. I won't be mad if they uh, did their thing in a couple seasons. I think there's a world where Russ starts season two. DeJounte can play the two or the three because he's DeJounte Murray. Zach Levine move over. That's that's a, This is a nice young liqueur. I will say, it's funny because in real life, DeJounte Murray put up that picture of Zach Levine in the Spurs jersey. And this is not the first time we've done a simulation in Zach Levine signs in the Spurs. As Bulls fan, a little bit scary. Steph Curry and Devin Booker together. Isaiah Thomas, bad boy Isaiah Thomas is coming off the bench, I guess, for at least the first season. And as things progress, I will put every player in the best position to succeed. So if that means I move Giddy over to the three, or shade to the whatever to get our players starting, right? Damian Lillard and John Stockton started together. That's a small backcourt at 6'1", 6'2", but I guess it could probably work out. Jason Kidd, Klay Thompson, who's got worse. He's only at 80 overall. And then the Wizards have Magic Johnson starting over whoever the heck would have been there before him. All right, now we sim. Let's just sim. Who gonna have the best stats? Who gonna win rookie of the year? Because that's part of your resume, kind of. Not really. Magic Johnson averages 19, 6, and 10 and a half for two steals. Shot 20 and a half for seven, three. We ain't worried about your jump shot yet, Magic. We ain't worried about it. He do got the finger tape. I mess with finger tape. Let's see. Steph Curry averaged 22 and 8. Steve Nash averaged 21 and about 11. Jerry West averaged 20 and 5. Okay, I need to get them. You need to get them assists up, Mr. Logo. I'm not I'm not really impressed. All these other point guards got good assists. What is your what is you doing? Chris Paul averaged 17 and 10 with two steals. Love it. Russell Westbrook averaged 17. If I'm not mistaken, he did that off the bench. Yeah. He did that off the bench. The per 36 numbers for Russell Westbrook are wild. Yeah, because like look at this. Per 36 for Chris Paul didn't he really change his stats because he played like 34 minutes per game. But yeah, no, those Russell Westbrook per 36 are disgusting. Wait till he get a starting role. And then we got 16 and 9 for Isaiah Thomas. We got 16 and 8 and a half for Jason Kidd. Okay. How many of these players ended up making? Oh, John Stockton. Not a good rookie season. He was one of the people that was starting too. Anybody like sneak into Wendell Carter? I see Magic for sure. That's dope. Rookie. Magic Johnson already starting off as the greatest point guard. Wendell Carter just made an all NBA team. Jeez, we traded him away for Frozen Bitch. Rookie teams are there. All guards. All 10 of our point guards ended up making. Nobody else even had a conversation. How many of them made the playoffs? Steph Curry made the playoffs. Um, play in. Who is on the Warriors? Somebody on the Warriors and OKC made it. Out East. I'm forgetting who plays for what team. All right. Forgive me. Forgive me. Let's see who ended up making it, making it. Okay. All right. All right. Jason Kidd plays for the Warriors. Okay. So Jason Kidd made it. Any of those people are going to make it to the second round because, hey, you become the greatest by being successful and the postseason, you know? Regular season stats, yeah, that's cool and all, but can you make some noise in the postseason? Now, who was it, Steph Curry? Steph Curry made the playoffs, but they ended up getting eliminated in seven, in this game seven, they lost by about 11, and Steph Curry did not have the greatest game by his standards, but it is what it is. Over here, the one seed got eliminated by Toronto, Fred Van Vliet put up 45, and they end up getting swept. The Brooklyn Nets got swept after getting coach of the year and winning the championship last season, got swept, and I, oh, who's on the number two team, this uh, Hornets team? It is Big O. Big O is the only uh, point guard alive from our video. And they're in the conference finals. Big O doing his thing. They get eliminated to the Pacers. Huh. I'm surprised the Pacers actually didn't have a top 10 pick this season. They, they lose to Zion with the Pacers. Look at that. No big changes either. This is the same team. Same team made it all the way to the finals. Okay. We're going to go and look at player progression, see how much better these players get after one season. Magic jumped up six, and it's, he's 20 years old. He now has 45 badges. This core right here, if y'all make the playoffs this season, I'm disappointed. Now, I understand the rest of the team maybe not as good, but that core right there is elite. Jason Kidd jumped up five. John Stockton only jumped up one. Now, if you remember, I think they said John Stockton's potential was Terrell Brandon. So, you know, he might he might be the, the odd person out of this entire challenge. Isaiah Thomas should be starting at shooting guard at the very least this season. I'm going to have to mess with their rotation. Steph Curry jumps up five. Russell Westbrook only jumped up three, which I'm disappointed in. I don't know why it was only three. And they also have, um, I, I guess, Devin Vassell is better than Russell Westbrook right now. So I'm trying to figure out how I get him in there. But he don't even qualify to be one of the top three guys to even make it a real thing. Where's the other guy? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm harping up on this guy. Jose Reyes for getting drafted before the other people involved. But like, come on, bro. Oh. Um, Pistons trying to win that championship championship. Say LeBron to a one-year deal, Chris Paul, K Cunningham and LeBron? 
Oh, snap. Okay, interesting, interesting. Jerry West also only jumped up one. I don't remember what Jerry West's potential was, but him jumping up one is a little bit scary for this challenge. Everybody else, majority of his peers have jumped up five, sixes, like Steve Nash here. To only jump up one is a bit scary. Only jumping up two for Big O, also scary, but hopefully he's kind of a late bloomer or something because Big O deserved to be in that conversation. Big O wins six man of the year. I tried to make him a starter and I guess they decided otherwise. So there it is. Coach here goes to James Brago. So that team, that Charlotte team had to be elite. They got six man of the year. They got LaMelo Ball and they won 54 games. 54 games is not even that elite. So maybe there's parody in the NBA. Magic Johnson didn't make it. So very interesting stuff. I don't know what happened to your Magic. Jason Kidd is all defensive. We got to take that into consideration when we talk about which one of them going to be the GOATs. You got to be able to defend at least a little bit. And Jason Kidd being all defensive first team at the age of 23 is, is a dub. And that's pretty much it. How many of these players ended up making the playoffs? Let's figure it out. Okay, sees Isaiah Ty Oh, they got Shea coming off the... <sighs> they got Shea coming off the bench. But they were the one seed, though, so it worked out. You know, Shea might be just the greatest... He can't be the greatest six-man because he didn't win six-man. But there it is. Okay. Russell Westbrook a year two. Numbers even went up. Bro, get him in. Next season, I'm putting Russell Westbrook in the starting lineup. These numbers too crazy per 36 for him not to start. They ended up being a three seed though. We saw Steph Curry average 29 and 10. Crazy. He might win MVP once Luka's done. Jason Kidd, we saw him be an all-defensive player averaging about two and a half uh, steals. John Stockton doesn't even start. I can't even force him to be a starter because where is he going to start? He's not better than Anthony Simons right now. And he's not better than Dame. I'm not forcing it. He got to at least have a close overall. He's not even close. So you about to be a perennial six man, my guy. One of the greatest of all time. He can't even get his overall high enough than to get over Anthony Simons. Here's uh, Steve Nash. He still plays in Sacramento, so they are struggling to even make the play-in. That's the West. You know what? You know what we got to look at? Where's our guy, Jose Reyes? Jose, did you get any PT? Enough PT to qualify? Hey, he came up a little bit. All right, slow grind for Jose Reyes. All right, out East, Jerry West. There's a conversation for Jerry West to be in here because uh, he's close to the same overall all these guys. So he might start next season strictly based off his overall getting higher. Next team was the Washington Wizards. I thought this team was going to be at least half decent. They was not half decent. Magic Johnson's numbers are slightly better than last season, I guess. Maybe not. About the same. They did not make the noise that you expect them to make. And for this team to have Cade Cunningham, Chris Paul, and then LeBron playing? Y'all serious? Playing? What you average, CP? 10 assists per game, so that's good, but like disappointing at the same time. And then, like I said, Charlotte Hornets look good. Big O's coming off the bench. Can't even be mad at it. I would still start him over Terry Rozier, but I think that that arc starts next season. I mean, we got a lot of our players in the playoffs, so let's see if any one of them can add an NBA championship to their resume only in the second year of their career. I know we spend a lot of time in these first couple seasons, but we will hit overdrive eventually because I got to think about like some of these players might end up playing 20 seasons. You know, I don't want this to be a three-hour video. Even though I could, bro. Three-hour videos are really good for the algorithm. I will say that. One of our teams, while I was talking, number one seed. Eliminating the first round by the eight-seeded team. Can the, can the Hornets get out of this round against the Miami Heat? Can they? It's going to be game seven. They did. Okay. All right. So, we do we do have people on opposite sides of the, of the, uh, the conferences. We got Big O as the sixth man of this team in the Eastern Conference Finals. And then Western Conference Finals has Steph Curry. See if one of them end up uh, doing their thing and winning the championship. It's looking it's looking bad for both of them. They're both down 3-0. Yep, okay. Um, can the Charlotte Hornets come back down 0-3 the, be the first team to ever do that? Nope. None of our teams win the championship. Instead, it goes to Joel Embiid, James Harden, and Ayo DeSumo because the Bulls had to let Ayo DeSumo go because they already had 17 point guards. And in the game seven, they end up winning. All right, all right, all right. Let's get into year number three. So we're going into year number three. And John Stockton has the same overall as Fred Van Vliet, Cole Anthony, an old James Harden. He not starting. We we put him at the bottom. Only through a couple seasons, we put him at the bottom as far as top 10 point guards in this simulation. Because he can't get his overall higher. Everybody else is looking good. Everybody else should be starting except for him, basically. Because he's not better than the people in front of him. Chris Paul at a 93 overall. Jason Kidd at a 92 overall. Magic 92. 92 for Isaiah Thomas. So a lot of our dudes have progressed. I'm going to go to the All-Star break and hope that one of them or a couple of them end up making it. Editing is great because between the last clip and this clip, I ate an entire pizza and you wouldn't even know. Steph Curry becomes the first point guard in our challenge to win an MVP. He averaged 33, 11, two steals, two rebounds. He wasn't 50, 40, 90 because for some reason this version of Steph Curry is not elite at free throws. But in year three, that's a good sign for him. Hey, all NBA teams are here. I know Steph Curry, of course, is going to be on that one. 
Steve Nash ends up on one as well. And Sacramento, does that mean Sacramento made the playoffs? And then we also got Magic Johnson. So three of them ended up there. Defensive team, Jason Kidd is still there. And the Ball brothers are there, but that's it. So is Sacramento a playoff team? The answer is nope. Nope. Don't matter. All NBA second team, no playoff appearance. All right. So that's, that's fun. That's cool. That's normal. That's very, very normal for people to do that, you know? And the good thing about this video is I could just do this to go to point guard stats and we're gonna see all of them. Steve Nash is right there. How about assists, man? This is a point guard challenge. Show me, show me assists. Magic Johnson, Steve Nash, you know, Jason Kidd are all there. Any of them gonna make some noise in the playoffs. So that's all I really care about. Okay, we got the first person to win MVP, cool. But who gonna make some noise once playoff time come around? The answer is, how many of them gonna get out of the first round or even get to the second round? Okay, we got one in the Golden State Warriors. Out East, there's not a single one. There's not a single one out east. But out west, Isaiah Thomas. You see, I, I did move it. So Josh Giddy's at the two, and then Shea's at the three for some reason. I, I guess that's interchangeable. So that team's actually really solid. And then with the Warriors, Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd, Jordan Poole. I mean, Clay Thompson and Draymond Green are gone. This is Jason Kidd's team completely. With the group of other super young people. This star lineup average age is like 24, if that. You know, if that. Can they make some noise against the number one seeded Minnesota Timberwolves? Absolutely not. Absolutely not, but OKC is here. Can we get that finals appearance? The first, nope. They were up 3-0 or 3-1 and they lost. Dang, by two in a game seven. Dang, Isaiah, come on, Zeke. We need a better performance than that. So this is year three and none of our guys do it. But again, Ayo Desumu has two NBA championships before the Bulls even like make the playoffs. So that's fun. If I'm not mistaken, this is the part of the end of their rookie deals, if yes. I would assume just all of them are going to be back next season, but anything is possible. We'll see. Uh, GG's to John Stockton. We will not be paying attention to him anymore. He has plateaued at an 83 overall. The good thing is, though, he's probably, he's going to start because Anthony Simon's gone, but that's it. Jason Kidd's up to a 95. That's so crazy that a lot of these dudes are hitting 90s, mid-90s, and then the John Stockton, out of all people, is just like, I'm good at being an 83. I'm good at being an average starting point guard in the NBA. Everybody still is on the original team, by the way. Big O is not progressing the way you want him to either. So that's very interesting. Steve Nash is up there in the 93. Okay. A lot of the players are hitting that. But like Jerry West also just stays 84. So Jerry West and John Stockton will not be talked about ever again in this video. Unless they just go crazy and just win MVP or championships as like role players. Chris Paul's a 95. Uh, that's Russell Westbrook is up to a 90. He the best player on his team now. Shout out to Russ. It took him a little time. You know, it took a little time. Seth Curry's up to a 93 coming off an MVP and Isaiah Thomas is 95. It took Russell Westbrook a little bit of time for him to hit that, that peak, but he there now. So look out, look out league. So I was going to go through the season and just bring y'all in with some monumental stuff happened. I consider this with monumental. The Sacramento Kings made a playoff appearance. Steve Nash is also on your third team. If you're wondering who won MVP, it was Luka again. Luka, Luka did the thing. But Steph Curry was on the first team as well, though. The Spurs are here. I, I feel like, hold on, let's do some math. One, two, three, four, five, right? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the likelihood of one of our teams winning the championship is nine out of 16. The one that's not in there, it's the Trailblazers, which is John Stockton. And the first round, oh, upset nation. Oh, snap, Steve Nash averages 35 and 12 in this series to steal. To, he shot not that great from three. He took 24 three-pointers, 24 three-pointers. They won that game, so it don't matter. He took 24 and made five. Dang. All right. OKC gets eliminated. That was one of our teams. So we will not see Isaiah Thomas Zeke make it to the finals. OK. Steph Curry's team does beat out Russell Westbrook's teams. But this year, Russell Westbrook started good numbers. Playoffs even better. So hopefully he can build on that. And then lastly, the Golden State Warriors, who have Jason Kidd, beat out MVP Luka. Luka uh, losing in the first round. But like, J. Kidd, though? 38 18 and eight and, and shooting almost perfect from the field and only two turnovers. Great performance from the guy over here. Big O and his debut as a starter ends up losing in the first round to Magic Johnson and Chris Stapps for his company. So that's kind of cool. Chris Paul and them lose to the lower seed and then Jerry West gets eliminated as well. So we have three people still remaining, three teams still remaining here. Um, regardless, we're going to get a conference finals appearance for one of them. And when we get a an appearance in the finals for our team finally okay brooklyn nets versus jason kidd uh so let's see can 
Jason Kidd get this series? 1-1. One, one. Nope. 2-2. Two, 3-2. Two. Two. Jason Kidd. Oh, Jonathan Kaminga Stone Fighters MVP. I don't care. I don't care. That's going on the resume for Jason Kidd as NBA champion. The first of that draft class to get an NBA championship. And it only took... One, two, three, four seasons for it to happen, but it did happen. And no, he might not have been the best player in the series because that was Jonathan Kaminga. He still is the point guard of the championship team, and we take those. Every single one of these players so far, oh my God, Anthony Simon's just chilling without a job now. I hate that we get to that point of 2K, whatever. Every one of these people so far have signed an extension, except for John Stockton doesn't have a job. But everybody else, 9 out of 10 assigned an extension. Some of them being five years like Chris Paul. Some of them being three years with a player option like Steve Nash. But every single one of them signed an extension, which is interesting. All right. Like I said, we're going into overdraft. So we'll see. Remember that these guys are only, what, 20, like, four now? 25? Listen, I still got, like, 15 years on some of these people. So I got I to gotta get fast. Magic's resume is getting better and better after winning this MVP in year number five. I'm going to be a first team, obviously. And he was all defensive first team last year. Not this year, but last year. So his resume is looking good. Three-time All-Star already. Three consecutive seasons. And a pair of one seeds make it to the finals. This is Wizards versus Suns. This is Magic versus Curry. Beal versus Booker. Vassell versus Bridges. Abdiya versus Jackson. And Porzingis versus Aiden. This is a really, really good matchup. Let me see how many wins that both teams ended up getting on the regular season. 60 and... Oh, and 51. So the, the favorite has to be the Suns. Their point differential was 10, and the point differential out east, mid. <laughs> it was mid. The Suns should win this convincingly, but you never really know. Game one is a Suns win. Two is a Suns win. Three is not. Four is. And just like that, the Suns, Steph Curry gets his first championship. So he's won an MVP, and he's won a championship. All right, let, let's see who can, who can build on that. Steph Curry and Magic Johnson both having great cases right now to be number one. Steph Curry won MVP this season, but he got swept in the second round. And now we got Big O versus Isaiah Thomas in the finals. Big O only hit 89 and plateaued, so he's still really good, don't get me wrong. But these other people are like making all NBA teams that he has not. And Isaiah Thomas as a 97, who is the, he's the highest overall point guard in the entire league. 97 overall, he gets finals MVP. And I'm trying to figure out, has he also done other things in his career other than that? NBA champion, one-time All-Star this season, and that's it. He's got champion All-Star Finals MVP. Simple. Kind of a late bloomer here. Now, some of these people are going to be up for uh, free agency this year. So I'm very curious to see if they're going to change. So, like, we see Steve Nash, but I, I don't remember. Did he have an option? He has a player option worth 42, so he could decline that. But, like, dang, Steph Curry signed in another extension or whatever. I'm just trying to see if these people were switch teams. Big O, player option next season. I just want to see some, some movement. That's all. I just want to see some movement. I don't want these people to all be one-year guys or one-team guys. I mean, I guess it's possible. Some of these dudes actually were in real life. That's part of the reason why they're great. You know, they stick through the thick and the thin for their organizations. But still, you know what I mean. I, I would love to see some of them team up. Brother's starting to make a case. He's starting to make a case. That's two finals MVPs for Zeke, man. Two finals MVPs, back-to-back -back seasons. He was not even an all-star this year. Uh, so that kind of hurts his case, which is weird. Because he's the highest overall player in the entire game, a point guard at least. But he only be averaging 23. He be taking his sweet old time. He was almost 50, 40, 90 in the regular season this season. 89% exactly. So he just, what's his shot in? His shot in is he super high. Why is he not putting up 30 pieces regularly? I don't understand it. Either way, he did it. Magic Johnson won the actual MVP. So Magic, you know, still, even though he ain't got no championship on this belt, as far as I remember, he's still getting MVPs and stuff. So... Can we blame it on him or his teammates that he ain't really been in contention crazily like that? Steve Nash is an unrestricted free agent with zero offers. That's the only thing we got. Everybody else is still on their team signed. But Steve Nash declined his player option and he signed back with the Kings. Ah, oh, that's lame. I was I was expecting some, some change. Um, but nope, he likes Sacramento so much that he stayed. So that's uh, something. John Stockton also here though. I forgot to even look for John Stockton because in my mind, he wasn't even in the video no more. I would assume that John Stockton did not get a contract. I'm just going to say that. You know, the way 2K be going and once we get to the year 2029, 20, I just assume that once you get to like, an, if you're only an 85 overall player, you're not getting a contract. You have to be elite elite or super cheap. There's no in between. There's no in between. And I think that's one of the main things 2K got to change about this game. Watching not Oh, he got picked up. But two-time NBA champion Ayo DeSumo did it? Come on, man. So, yeah, 2K got to change that. Let's figure out what stock that way. I know, again, he's not a big part of the video anymore, but we still got to figure it out. Oh, sorry. He's still not. 
he, he doesn't have a job. I ain't even realized that he had been on three different teams. That lets you know how much I've been keeping up with John Stockton. He doesn't have a contract right now. I thought I just went into free agency and didn't see him. But the thing is, he's an 80, he's an 82. And they were only showing me 83s. So he gonna get picked up eventually, but it won't be worth nothing. So far, undisputed best player of this video, six-time All-Star, three-time MVP, and we're only 27 years old. So Magic Johnson has been him. He's been he's been the guy. Uh, but we also been seeing other players make NBA teams. Maybe not this year. Okay, so Steve Nash is there, and the Steph Curry's here as well. We got Spencer Fox, who is De'Aaron's little bro. Uh, obviously better than De'Aaron, because De'Aaron ain't made no NBA team. Okay, year eight of 20. What are we doing? Why are we taking so long? Chris Paul, thank you so much, bro. He got a ring. I don't care. He's not going to be first in this list. But he got a ring. Four-time All-Star, NBA champion, NBA second team last season, but NBA champion. NBA champion. And plus, he got, oh, he's only a year number eight, and the Pistons are nice. So he might end up getting multiple ones. Stop sleeping on Christopher Emmanuel Paul. This could be the different version of him that end up doing some great stuff. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, Magic Johnson has won like four straight MVPs. Who cares? Jason Kidd became the third guard in recent history to win Defensive Player of the Year. It goes Gary Payton, it goes Marcus Smart, and now it goes Jason Kidd, who averaged almost three steals a game. And then this guy just looking awkwardly winning most improved player. A name we have not kept up with in some time, Jerry West. Mr. Logo takes a series in seven and ends up winning Finals MVP. He, is, he has no accolade on his thing other than Finals MVP. He's never made an All-Star game. He's never won an award. He was all rookie second team. And now he adds a finals MVP to that resume. So still not the greatest of resumes, but hey, a lot of people turn in MVPs. A lot of people turn in real life awards to get that championship. So uh, shout out to him, man. And finals MVP on top of that. I still have to keep looking because I don't know. Some of these players might retire early. I think this might be the free agency year for these dudes. So, you know, potential big changes coming. JK, I was I was wrong. It's not, it's not this season. It's next season if it's not this season. So uh, yeah. Uh, implications coming up very, very soon. Russell Westbrook signed an extension, but we do have Isaiah Thomas here, Magic Johnson, Steve Nash, uh, Chris Paul signed an extension, Steph Curry signed an extension already. Jason Kidd, though, is hitting free agency. Big O signed an extension, so he's there to stay. Jerry West signed an extension, so we will see a lot of our dudes hitting free agency next season, which should be interesting. How old are they again? How long have we been going? Uh, some of them are 30, some of them are 32. So we, we get it, we get it to that point. It's almost that time. The first domino has fallen. John Stockton didn't do anything in his NBA career. He's kind of disappointed, bro. He played for one, two, three, four, five, six organizations in his just eight years of play. He didn't even have a job this year. I don't know how we got to this point. 10th overall pick. So he was the last guy drafted out of our 10 top 10. And he just did not live up to the hype at all. So because of that, According to today's video, he is the worst point guard when it comes to top 10 PGs of all time. Did I just see who I thought I saw? Did I just see who I thought I saw? Hold on. Jose Reyes also retired. Jesus Christ. I mean, he had a season where he averaged over 10. But that's it. Now, I was talking about free agency and stuff. Everybody continues to just sign extensions. So it feels like this is about to be a video where everybody's a one-teamer, which I guess it's fine. But I definitely want to see people switch rosters but it don't look like it's gonna happen. I think that the next time I talk to y'all, it's when the other dominoes have fallen. As you can see, a lot of those dudes still are high 90 overall players. So I still got a lot of time to sit here and simulate until we start to figure things out. But what I will say, if I'm gonna guess right now how this is about to unfold, Magic Johnson is number one. Ma oh, look at, look at that. Um, Big O is only an 80 overall, so he's dropping at 33. Magic Johnson has been number one. He's got multiple NBA MVPs. I don't think he's won an NBA championship, but I could be mistaken. And then we got like Isaiah Thomas number two, because Isaiah Thomas, though he don't have like a bunch of all-star appearances, bro has like four rings and a bunch of finals MVPs. And I think I would put Steph Curry number three. You know, that, that's just what I'm thinking. Been a ton of Steph Curry and Magic Johnson on this award out of nowhere. Steve Nash just won MVP 50 40 90 club and like blew that out of the water. That's crazy because we haven't seen him do that. It's been magic, it's been Steph, but it's never been anybody other than that when it comes to MVP. Steph Curry's not even on NBA no more, so maybe he'd have fell off a little bit. But wow, Steve Nash just won an MVP and he making things more interesting. But can you make Sacramento a contender though? They're the five C right now, and they're like they might be getting eliminated. Maybe. Oh. Get out of the first round. They're going to get the eighth seed. Hold on. Or they're going to let this AC steal this series. They didn't. Steve Nash, put it together. Put it together, Steve. He got swept in the finals to Alvin Levins. 
Dang. But Steve Nash just went on a legendary run as a five seed, you know? NBA MVP and then playoffs, he played amazing as well, but couldn't get it done. Couldn't get the actual thing done. It was weird to be simulating this far in and seeing like Giannis retire, you know? He spent his entire career in Milwaukee. For lifer, you love to see that. Brandon Ingram spent the rest of his career in New Orleans. What it looks like is there, there was not a lot of change in this video. All of these years in Brooklyn for Ben, DeJounte spent his entire career there. Jaren spent his entire career here. Did every team, okay, Mo Bamba switched teams a couple times. We're like, see, like most people, if you were good, Miles Bridges spent his entire, nope, he just went back. Spent a lot of his career there. So if you were good, you probably spent one team, one career, which I respect, I guess, but it's just not as fun for the video, you know? It's undisputed now. He added Offensive Player of the Year award on top of it. Bro just shot, shot 60% from the field as a point guard, 40% from three, and then also won Defensive Player of the Year. Steve Nash won another NBA MVP. But I'm just saying, Russell Westbrook gonna be a first team. Hey, look at that. I'm just saying, like, Magic Johnson, there's no competition no more. Big O becomes a second domino to fall. Spends his entire career in Charlotte, 35 years old, 14-year career. If we're taking a look at the statistics throughout it, he averaged a career 16 points, nine assists, only four rebounds, which is crazy for Big O, because y'all know he got a lot of rebounds in his career. But he shot 52% from the field, 41% from three, and 83% from the free throw line. And the only awards he got was six man of the year early in his career and an all rookie team. That's all, that's it. I would probably say that he's probably ninth on the list based off that. That's not, that's not a good resume. Big O. They didn't even get no championship on top of it. Because if you're going to be a role player, at least you're going to win a championship. Nope, not in Charlotte. Next to fall was Jerry West. He won one championship late in his career. But that's pretty much it. I mean, he got the championship over Big O. So maybe that's why Big O is number nine and he's number eight. The stats are here. It was it was not the crazy, y'all. Spent the majority of his career in Orlando. Had one last season in Memphis. Then he called it raps. Averages 18.8, eight assists. And that's pretty much it for Jerry West. So... You know, Lee, I thought this was Russell. No, it's Lee. It's his brother. I, You know, we at the point now where a lot of these players overall are like sub-90s. So I'm assuming that next next class of uh, a retirees are going to have multiple people. But we're down to our final eight. So technically, I could probably tell Russell Westbrook not to retire because he's still in 88. Or even Jason Kidd in 82. But I'm going to let them retire on their own accord, okay? So Russell Westbrook ended up retiring, right? Spent his entire career in San Antonio. Let's take a look at what his stats are like or accolades. 10-time NBA All-Star. 3-time NBA First Team. 2-time Second Team. 1-time Third Team. So add that up. That's 8 years of being one of the 6 top point guards in the league, which is important. Because we added 10 point guards. And then we also had, like, Trey Young in the league. Luka Doncic, Darius Garland, like just really good players. Um, he never won an MVP, but he was the, the captain of the all-star voting multiple times in his career. Overall averages were about 25 points per game, only three rebounds for some reason, and then nine assists. He shot 40% from three for his career and 87% from the free throw line. So a different version of Russell Westbrook than we all know, but it's still a really, really good version of him. So shout out to Russ. And then Jason Kidd. Spent his entire career in the Golden State Warriors uniform. 19 points per game, about 10 assists. We'll round up for you. Six rebounds. He averaged more rebounds than Russell Westbrook, which is cool, I guess. Jason Kidd definitely was a rebounder in this time. He shot 48% from the field for his career, then 38% from three. And then his accolade case looks like NBA champion, three-time All-Star, All-NBA second team, two times, and then four times on third team. So five-time All-NBA. And then two-time defensive player of the year, 13 years. 13 years where he was an all-defensive first-team player. And then the years where he was not first-team, I'm assuming that he was on the second team. So, which career would you rather have? Russell Westbrook's three-time All-Star, but all the, uh, some other accolades. Or would you rather have a 10-time All-Star? Uh, actually, bro, this is interesting. Uh, what is this? Seven-time All-NBA is carrying, bro. But then again, six-time All-NBA here for Jason Kidd. Russell Westbrook got three first-teams, but Jason Kidd never touched the first team. But I don't know, bro. Defensive player of the year two times, NBA champion and finals MVP, by the way, if I'm not mistaken. NBA champion, NBA finals MVP, three-time All-Star, six-time All-NBA, two-time defensive player, 13-time All-Defense. I think that's beating what Russell Westbrook gave us. But Russell Westbrook also got five times All-Defensive. I don't know. You're living on the conversation. Who had the better career between Jason Kidd and Russell Westbrook? A couple more players. Carl Lequitz, Chris Paul, and, uh, and Stephen Curry both retire. Uh, that's it from this year. Okay. We're by the way, two and a half hours filming this video so far. So long time. 
NBA MVP, one, right, for Chris Paul, two-time champion, pretty good, 15-time All-Star, All-NBA team, six times. Steph Curry had two MVPs very early in the video, one-time champion, 16-time All-Star, and then, man, 14-time uh, All-NBA? I mean, he never got a ring. Oh, no, he got one. Okay. Steph Curry's probably third. He's probably behind... No. Hmm. He's probably second behind Magic, based on what we're seeing. He's probably second behind Magic. Chris Paul has a conversation for third, man. MVP, two-time champion, and a lot of all-star appearances and some all-NBA appearances. He got a conversation for third. Who is even left at this point? I feel like I've been... I've just been here for so long. I don't even know who's left. Steve Nash is still out there hooping. Steph Curry is retiring this year. Same thing with Chris Paul. Isaiah Thomas, Magic Johnson... Please just call it quits next season. If all three of y'all don't retire next season, I'm going to be upset. Upset. Y'all did it. You won. You know what I'm saying? You won the longevity game. We, we, if y'all all retire together, y'all all get first place. Let's just say that. Y'all all get first place. Only Isaiah Thomas retired, by the way. Three-time champion, five-time All-Star, uh, All-NBA team twice, and then a rookie team. Let me show you the averages of Isaiah Thomas throughout his career. He averaged 21-9, and 50-40-88 are the percentages. And I haven't even been showing if those players made the Hall of Fame. But I think you can probably guess that they will. All of these. No, nah, not all of them. Majority of these players will make the Hall of Fame. The last two dominoes to fall have fallen. Magic Johnson and Steve Nash. Both play out 20-year careers. Steve Nash could have retired last year because bro didn't even get no PT in this year. Overall statistics for him are 26, 25 and a half points per game, I guess. About 10 assists, about three rebounds. 50, 40, 90 club for his entire career. Magic Johnson's statistics were insane. He averaged about 28, 9, and 6, almost 50, 40, 90, but he missed it by a couple marks. Let me show y'all these accolades and stuff because he killed it. He was MVP half of the time he was in the league. All NBA first team over half the time he was in the league. 16 time All Star. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. That's insane. He also got a defensive player of the year twice that don't fit here. He also got a six man of the year when he was old that does not fit here. Bro, just, he is number one. He is the greatest point guard of all time. All right? That is that is confirmed. Steve Nash, accolades a two-time MVP. Never got the ring still, but two-time MVP. 15-time All-Star. 15-time All-Star? Bro, what was Steve Nash's real accolades? Let me see what Steve Nash's real accolades were. Eight-time All-Star. Okay, so he almost doubled his All-Star appearances in this one because he was definitely a late bloomer. Came in at 22. Didn't get his first All-Star appearance until he was 27. He got his two MVPs, though. And then he was all NBA team, what is that, three, six, uh, 11 times, all rookie team. But, you know, Magic Johnson is number one on every list right now. There's no, no way you can have anybody over Magic Johnson. Now, before we end this video, I got to go out in NBA records. Magic Johnson is the all-time leading scorer in basketball history in his 20-year career. Steph Curry was number four. Steve Nash was number five. Russell Westbrook ended up number 20. And Chris Paul, 23. Isaiah, 24. Cool. Let's go three-pointer. Steph Curry, Steve Nash bodied this competition when it came to three-point shots. Free throws, nobody's going to get here because we're point guards. So Magic Johnson ended up top 10. And Oscar Robinson was top 10. Rebounds, yeah, none of our point guards going to end up there. Even though Russell Westbrook and Big O probably should if it would have been the real version of them. Whatever. Assists, John Stockton was overtaken by Steve Nash. Steph Curry was also there. Magic Johnson was there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of our top 10 players of this challenge ended up top 10 in assist totals. And then steals, Jason Kidd, Chris Paul, and, and John Stockton. And then minutes, nobody cares about that, right? That's the video, man. I think that we can all agree that Magic was number one. And then after that, I think it's some conversations. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave it a like. To let me know that you watched this entire thing, just say that, um, ooh, something about Magic. Hold on, let me figure this out. Magic Johnson, greatest wizard of all time. You know what I'm saying? Move out the way Harry Potter. It's Magic Johnson. I appreciate you watching. I'm out. Peace.